I should have bought one of these years ago. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Hey, welcome back guys. Today we're checking out the Opus or Opus or Oops. Well, I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce it, but what I can tell you is this is a fabulous unit. If you want to skip all the details, go down in the description below. I'll leave a link to where you can pick up one of these for yourself. If you want all of the details, well, let's go ahead and get started taking a look at this unit. Now, right away, this is a 1,024 watt hour unit that we're looking at today. It is expandable and we'll cover that in just a minute. It has a built-in inverter that is 2,000 watts with a peak of 4,500 watts and it weighs just over 27 pounds. Now, this solar generator would be great for several use cases. Maybe you want to use it tailgating. Well, this would be a great device to have with you. Maybe you want to use it as a backup power supply for some kind of home medical equipment, maybe like a CPAP machine. Again, this thing will have zero issues using it. I'm going to be using it in the RV and in the pickup truck during travel days. Now, another cool feature about this is it will work as a UPS or an uninterruptible power supply. Now, the switchover time uh, for this unit is roughly 20 milliseconds, so I might not trust it to a server that I needed to keep uh, up and running, but for most of your other appliances or even your radio gear, this would work perfect in that setup. Now, taking a look at the front of the unit, on the top left-hand side, we've got two USB-C type ports. These are both power delivery and will deliver up to 100 watts. Below that, we're seeing four USB-A type ports and those will give us a max output of 18 watts. Now, one really cool feature about this unit is you can turn each section on and off individually. So if I just want to turn on the USB section, I would simply press the little power button right here and that will turn on the USB section, leaving these others powered off. Just to the right over here of the main screen, we've got the 12 volt section. We get a power port, so if we open that up, you'll see a regular power socket there. Below that, we've got two barrel connectors. These are 5.5 by 2.1 millimeter connectors. Again, using the power switch right below that, we can turn that on. You'll see on the main screen right here that we get where it says car and DC. So that turns on this section. We can power those individually, each section. And that's one of the coolest things about this. Now, below that, we've got four 110 outlets and each of these will give us 20 amps. Actually, I believe that's 20 amps for everything connected to any of the four. So you could maybe put nine on this one and nine on this one before you would max it out. And we can power that on by simply hitting the little AC button right here. Taking a look on the right hand side of the unit is how we will charge this unit. We can use the Anderson power ports up top to work with either a solar panel or to charge this from the car. And then we've got an AC power port here if you want to plug this up to commercial mains at your house. If you're working with solar panels, it will take a max of 800 watts through the Anderson power poles right here. And if you're using the AC power port, you've got two different options to charge. You can either charge it at 700 watts or at 1400 watts. And I'll show you guys what that looks like here in just a second. Now, when I connected this to the truck to charge it, I was gaining about 100 watts. So over the course of an hour, I'm going to see about a 10% increase in the battery level of the generator. On the other side, we've got this cover that covers up the port where we can supply this with extra power from a second unit. So they do make expansion packs for this. If you purchase the expansion pack, you will triple the runtime of this unit. Now let's see what this thing can power. We're gonna start off with something fairly small. I've got a four inch grinder from the shop. It's gonna be noisy, but here we go. Let's see how it handles the grinder. And the grinder didn't even come close to maxing it out. Let's go ahead and turn on a heat gun next. I'm gonna turn it on uh, its low setting. You'll see we're drawing a little over 600 watts out of it. Let's go ahead and crank it up. 
that's max on the heat gun and now I'm gonna max out the fan I did hear the fan of the generator itself kick on so that's a little bit of extra let's kick up the fan though on the heat gun and see what we can get out of it and we're looking at right around 1500 max hey what if we plug that grinder up do you think it'll run both of them all right with the heat gun running here comes the grinder Now, let's see if it'll brew coffee. We've got the Keurig hooked up, my mug's underneath. Let's give it a shot and see what happens. We'll hit the 12 ounce because, well, I need lots of coffee this morning. And let's go ahead and hit the brew button. You hear the fan kick on, so it's still trying. Looks like we're pulling about 1300 watts right here, and I hear the coffee coming out into the pot. I'd say that was a success. Now you'll notice as soon as it finished up, the fan has shut off in the unit itself and we're left with about 71% battery. Now they include three different power adapters in the box with it. One of them that you get is the one that plugs up to the wall outlet at your house. Another one that you get will allow you to connect the unit to your car for charging. So cigarette lighter on this end and then we've got the Anderson power poles on this end. The last one that was included in my packaging is the one for the solar panels. We've got Anderson power poles on this end, and then we've got MC4 connectors on the other. Now, looking at the documentation, it doesn't look like you actually need a solar charge controller in line with this. It looks like the solar charge controller is already built into this unit, but I couldn't find a lot of documentation on that. I'm strictly going by the diagram that is shown in the manual. Now, one thing I did want you guys to be able to see before we close this out, I do have this connected to the AC socket in my house to recharge it. You'll notice that the fan slowly ramps up as we go through this. Right now, we're only pulling about 500 watts, putting it into the unit. That is going to continue to climb, and as it climbs, that fan noise is going to get louder and louder. So it's just something I wanted to point out. It's not a deal killer by any means, but it's got to keep that unit cool while it is charging and putting 1400 watts. I think actually I only see about 12 to 1250 uh, into this, but while it's putting that many watts back into the unit, well, it does need the fan. Nope, no, we're almost up to 1400 right there. So. 1370 is somewhere roughly where it settles down at and as the battery gets closer to full you will see these watts drop back just a little bit so now you know why i opened this video with i should have bought this years ago i can see so many potential use cases both day-to-day -day and emergency power related that I needed one of these in my arsenal and just didn't realize it. I would love to see the expansion pack for this. I might have to pick that up in the very near future. If you found today's information helpful, be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.